finally the end. Indeed, and in my hand I have the, the judgment of the appeal committee, Advocate Mohatsi and his team, and they released this on the 8th of June 2018, which we hope will forever be known as the Low Carb Diet Day in future. So the appeal committee decided that there were three issues that they wanted to address. Having been through the 28 days of, in, of evidence, they decided there were three questions that they had to answer. Question one was whether the respondent, that's me, received a fair trial, more specifically relating to the issue of the protection of the public as alleged during the appeal. Now, as I'll discuss, the prosecution changed their argument from that I was given advice that was unprofessional and unconventional and dangerous and could cause death, etc., to one that they weren't protecting the individual and the, the mother who had asked for the information. I wasn't protecting her, I wasn't in conflict with her. It now became an issue of saying something that, that could cause damage to the general public. So in other words, the issue now became the protection of the public and the Health Professional Council's role in that. The second question was whether or not there was a doctor-patient relationship. And as we will see, what happened in the trial was it was very clear that there was no doctor-patient relationship. So the prosecution had to change the argument that they were protecting an individual and her baby. Now they were protecting the millions of millions of people on Twitter who might read this information act on it and then cause millions and millions of deaths worldwide. So the prosecution changed the argument during the trial and in fact even in the appeal phase they, they significantly changed the argument. And then finally and importantly whether or not the respondent's replying tweet amounted to an unconventional advice. In other words whether what I said was amounted to unconventional information. So the first part of the document then goes, addresses this question. Were the HPCSA correct in saying that their responsibility was to protect the public? And was that part of the original charge? And they make the point that it was never part of the original charge. The original charge was that I'd given unprofessional, unconventional advice to a mother, breastfeeding mother on Twitter. It had nothing to do with the general public. And they make the point that we were never informed at any stage that that was part of the charge. That, and they come to the conclusion that that was added as part of a fishing expedition. So their conclusion is, and the correct conclusion, is that when the HPCSA realized that there was no doctor-patient relationship, their case against me fell away. And so what they had to do in the appeal process was to make it a different charge. And the, this committee very clearly indicates and identifies that this was hocus pocus, you can't do that. So what their conclusion was, it is the unanimous decision of the committee members that the issue of protection of the public is a fishing expedition by the appellant. So in other words, Advocate Bup Chung brought this in at the late stage and we were never asked to defend against it because it was not part of the original charge. They continue, this argument commenced during the hearing of the appeal as mentioned earlier. It is not one of the elements of the original charge. It was not argued by the appellant, that's the prosecution, when arguing the matter before the committee in the original case. It is not contained in their heads of argument. The respondent adjusted their arguments during the hearing of the appeal in a desperate endeavor to secure a favorable decision, and this approach is unacceptable. Therefore, the argument is rejected. So that's strike one against the Health Professional Council. The second point was whether a doctor-patient relationship existed, and there again, they are equally strong. They claim, therefore, the argument by the appellant that the issue of doctor-patient relationship irrelevant, is irrelevant is rejected because that's what the prosecution were trying to say, that when they couldn't prove there was a doctor-patient relationship, they said it's irrelevant, we're protecting the public. 
So the conclusion of the committee was that the committee correctly applied its mind to its evaluation of the issue of the doctor-patient relationship. The committee, that's the original committee, spent quality time evaluating the conduct of both Mrs. Leinstra and the respondent, as can be deduced from the tweets. In addition, the response to Leinstra was a general one. In other words, I gave a general answer, not specific medical advice, without a particular reference to her baby, instead to babies. In other words, I gave general information to babies. Mrs. Leinstra chose not to follow the advice of the respondent and instead chose to consult with a dietitian. Thereafter, Leinstra's baby was consulted by Mrs. Claire Yolsing Stradom, therefore excluding the respondent. So I wasn't involved anymore. So in our view, the committee correctly held that there was no doctor-patient relationship between Mrs. Leinstra and the respondent myself. So that's the second case. Second pillar of their argument has disappeared. There was no doctor-patient relationship. And then the final one, which, which is actually really interesting, is was my information unconventional? In, and this a lot of people are interested in because they want to know is a low-carb diet based on science or not? And if you go back on the trial, you'll see that we presented 12 days of testimony and that's of course captured on all these videos. But the prosecution presented one paper, the disputed Nordea paper, which incidentally is still before the Stellenbosch University and they are deciding whether or not it should be retracted. Zoe Harkom and I have been through the paper. We have gone through the responses of Dr. Nordia and her team. We've reanalyzed their original analysis and we've shown that the low carb diet outperforms the low fat diet, which is the opposite of what the Nordia study originally showed. We are very much hopeful that the Stellenbosch University will do the right thing and they will say because the paper is no longer valid it must be withdrawn. But anyway, I can tell you that our analysis shows that the low carb diet outperformed the low fat diet in the Nordea analysis. So remember that was the sole piece of evidence that was produced by the, by the, uh, the prosecution to, to, to defend the fact that the low carb diet is dangerous and the low fat diet is healthy. We chose to fight this whole case on the basis that the low carb diet is safe and healthy and beneficial. And the prosecution never really contested it. And so the, the decision by the committee never really addresses whether the diets are correct and safe. The original decision from the original committee was that there's no evidence that the LCH is not not evidence-based. In other words, it was a double negative. In other words, it is evidence-based. But they couldn't bring themselves to say that. What this committee says is that, in fact, they support our position. And, she, and they therefore con conclude that the argument of the appellant that the respondent provided unconventional advice of breastfeeding babies is not persuasive and is rejected. So they say that we in fact did give conventional advice. And we interpret that to mean that this committee, this appeal committee, says that the low carbohydrate diet is evidence-based. And therefore it can be prescribed more widely as a treatment certainly for insulin resistance but also for, for general health. So the final conclusion is that it is the unanimous decision of the members of the appeal committee that the appeal be dismissed. It is so ordered. So that's it. After 28 days, we have an eight-page document which essentially says the trial was a waste of time. It was a fishing expedition. It should never have happened. And that is very, very satisfying to myself and my team. We hung in there, we knew we'd win, and this is our day of success. I would like you to just give me, or give our viewers a sense of how much this public spat has cost. Yeah, I don't want to give exact numbers, but it's been a couple of million to, to me, so that'll give you an idea. And to the Health Professional Council, we estimate it'll be 10 to 12 million rand. 
And, and besides that, there would have been another 10 million rand if Dr. Rocky Ramdas and Mike van der Nest had charged their proper fees, but they gave their time pro bono. And it locked them up for six months to a year looking after this trial where they could have been doing other things. The answer to the question of how much time did this consume of my time and my wife's time and my family time, the answer is 100% for at least two years. So there was a period when I was preparing to present my information where I simply spent 100% of my time on this topic. And all that my wife and I ever spoke about was this ruddy trial and how evil the people were who we were up against. And that was a dark period in our lives. And it's not something that anyone would want to go through. The good side is that I used that time ultimately to write the book, The Law of Nutrition, with Marika Sporos. So the time wasn't wasted, and of course I could present all the information that is on these videos. But it was two years, and the reality is that if I had not been retired from my work, I would not have been able to do this. I would have had to, to retire from work and take this up as a full-time job. I think the worst part was the emotional trauma because what happened when the University of Cape Town wrote that disgusting letter to the Cape Times, signed by four professors, including the Dean of Medicine, who is now the Rector of Stellenbosch University, that letter was frankly defamatory. But what it did was it mobbed me. I didn't understand that at the time. But it said, Noakes is unacceptable to the University of Cape Town, and no one can associate with him. And I've spoken to senior colleagues who have apologized to me from the University of Cape Town Medical School and they've said you were victimized and we were party to it and we feel guilty. But we were told you were the bad guy and we were scared to associate with you. And that's how mobs work. So I was mobbed and removed from the faculty of the University of Cape Town and to a, some extent from the Sports Science Institute of South Africa. So when I went to work, I didn't know who was with me and who was against me. And that's a terrible situation to be in. And I, we had to, we cope with that for three to four years and I think that was the worst part and the tragedy is that no one said sorry it's just like it didn't happen and I think that's that's the worst but that's the part that's really hard to get to grips with uh, has it sunk in yet it hasn't really sunk in so we're in a week into the positive decision by the appeal committee I think that immediately I read this, I went straight to the final page and I, I said, I read, it's the unanimous decision of the, member of the members of the appeal committee that the appeal be dismissed. And I just, I felt, well, we did it, we did it. But since then, I've had so much activity on Twitter that support from around the world has been astonishing. I think it's like taking a weight off your shoulder and I can now go to sleep at night and not worry about it. That, oh my gosh, what happens if the appeal committee gets the wrong decision? What are we going to do? It's going to be more time. We're going to have to go to the high court and so on. That's out of the window. So I'm, I'm really very happy to be relieved of that. But I don't think it's fully, it's fully sunk in. And I don't think I also appreciate yet the extent to this has influenced the rest of the world. This is a whole new chapter. How excited are you? I'm very, very excited, obviously, because when I started this low-carb movement, my movement towards low-carb seven years ago, I wasn't really sure that I was correct. All I knew, it was a journey. And now I know that I'm right. I know that everything I did was appropriate. Everything I've written is true. I wrote in The Real Meal Re Revolution that if you have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, you must eat a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. And that was 100% correct and it's been proven. And we didn't know it was absolutely correct at the time. And I now believe that, that medicine in the next 10 years is going to move into a new phase where, where we realize that nutrition is the key determinant of our health. Nutrition, and, and we're sitting in a gym there, I work out twice a week, gym as well, but nutrition is the, is the cornerstone on which you build your health and then you add in the exercise as well. I might just add one final comment, which is really exciting, that after seven years on the low carbohydrate diet, my diabetes is in completely in remission. 
And that's amazing because I've not heard of anyone going seven years for their diabetes to be in remission. So it's really interesting because the Association for Dietetics in South Africa, who were party to the charge against me, originally promoted to their members that the reason why I'd got type 2 diabetes was because I started eating a high-fat diet for three months and then I suddenly got type 2 diabetes. The fact that I'd eaten a high-carbohydrate diet in extremis for 33 years wasn't considered. So now they have a problem to explain why after seven years on a high-fat diet my diabetes has been reversed. And of course they need also to address the question of the Verta Health Study which was published just a few months ago showing also that 60% of people with type 2 diabetes who follow the Banting diet and the Banting diet was part of the prescription for this, this population group 60% of the people have put their type 2 diabetes into remission and either completely stopped using insulin or reduced it dramatically. So the tide has turned and in the four years that we've been in court I think the evidence has become so overwhelming that this is the diet that the majority of people should be eating that the evidence is no longer controversial. It's now fact and I'm proud that we could have made a major contribution to getting that fact across to millions of people around the world.